I'm back with some more financial mathematics. This time, compound interest. So we just looked at simple interest, and in simple interest, that um, was merely that every year I get the same amount of interest because my interest is calculated on my principal, the original amount invested. That's not really fair because my money is actually growing. So, uh, so should my interest be growing. When I had a thousand rand originally, the next year I have a thousand one hundred rand. And I would expect my new interest to be calculated on this new thousand one hundred rand. But it all depends on what banks or um, uh, investment uh, companies offer you. So in this case, we might have a situation where I have invested a thousand rand. Okay, that is in year one. Sorry, that is originally year zero. After one year, let's say we earn 10% interest again, so 10% uh, interest. But this time, we are going to say compound interest. And the same compound interest. Okay, that means after one year, I get a thousand rand plus. 10% of a thousand, so it is a hundred, which means I get a thousand one hundred. The second year, however, I get I have a thousand rand, and then I earned my first year's interest, the hundred, but in the new year, my interest is calculated on the thousand one hundred. And a thousand one hundred times uh, ten percent is a hundred and ten. Now I have a hundred and ten, so that in total I have one thousand two hundred and ten rand in my bank account. The next year again, instead of calculating my interest, so in the third year, instead of calculating my interest on my principal amount, I calculate it on the present amount. The present amount, which is in this case 1,210. So I've got my 1,000 in the first year, plus 100 in the, oh, well, that's the original amount, 1,000, plus 100 in the first year, 110 in the second year. Now at the end of the third year, I'm going to get 10% of 1,210. Not 10%, which is the eliminator zero at the back. I'm sure you know why. 1,000. Plus 100, plus 110, plus 121. Okay, which give me, gives me, what's it, 1,331 rand. And that continues like that. I am sure you get the message. Okay, this time it's not so simple. So if I look at the 10th year, I know I would have gotten my 1,000 originally that I invested 100 for the first year plus 110 for the second year plus 121 for the third year plus 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 all the way up to um, the 10th year and calculating the 10th year out of my head is going to be a little bit difficult but we do have a tool to do so because we can see oh, this is the first term of a sequence Let's look at this, this part. Just the interest portion is the first term of a sequence. So that is A. How did I get the next term of that sequence? The 110. Well, it is actually just the first term multiplied by a certain digit. So let me see. Okay. I find a constant ratio. 110 divided by 100 gives me 1,1. 121 divided by 110 gives me 1, sorry, 110 gives me 1,1. And this continues. So I get a constant ratio. So I get a constant ratio of 1,1. Which means that my Investment after n years will be my thousand plus, and now it's the sum. Let's just do this sum 
of a geometric sequence. Can you remember that? The sum of a geometric sequence, 1 minus r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. In the numerator, I get my original investment. Or oh, actually, no, no, not because a is not original. It's my first year's um, interest is 100. That is multiplied with 1 uh, minus r in this case is 1 comma 1 that has an exponent of n which is in this case still n because we're working out n years divided by 1 minus 1 comma 1 and here we see this simplifies to 100 in my bracket uh, let's just swap the negative bracket around so let's just make it a 1 comma 1 to the power of n minus 1 and I think that's going to Better. divided by and then the bottom also 1 comma 1 minus 1 let's get, get the denominator to be positive so we get 1000 100 times 1 comma 1 to the power of n minus 1 divided by 0 comma 1 now, 100 divided by 0, 1 is 1,000 times 1, 1 to the power of n minus 1. So this is simply 1,000 times, and I'm just going to write it like this, 1 plus 0, 1 to the power of n minus a thousand. So I distributed a thousand. So if I go back to this, I get a thousand plus one thousand times one comma sorry one plus zero comma one to the power of n minus the thousand oh, I'm sorry I'm having to write over this I ignore that. Let's use a different color maybe that's gonna help. So that after n years, this and that cancels. I'll have a thousand times one plus zero comma one to the power of n. Now maybe that was a long way around to give you a simple, very simple formula, and that is that my future value. And this thousand, what was that? That was my principal value. Is my principal value multiplied by 1 plus, and what was that? That was my interest rate. My interest rate after I divided by 100 with an exponent of n. We see how it differs from the compound, sorry, the simple interest formula. Let's look at some examples on how to use the compound formula. 2,000 Rand is invested at 6% compound interest per annum for 3 years. What is the final value of the investment? Once again, try and always start with the correct formula. So in this case we know our formula because it's compound is that my future value is my principal multiplied by the bracket that contains 1 plus my interest with an exponent of n, and the number of times I get interest. My future value, my amortized value is the value I do not know. My principal value is the original value, which is, well, how much was it? 2,000 yes. 2,000 rand interest is calculated at 6% per annum, which means it's 6% means divided by 100, Move the comma two spaces, 0, 0, 6. And finally, in the number of times I'm going to get interest, I am going to get interest three times, sorry, three times because I get it yearly. So I get it over three years. So if we substitute into our formula, we find 2000. Substitute in P, 1 plus. 0, 0,06 to the power of 3. Using our calculator, we say 2,000 times 
uh, in brackets one plus point zero six close the brackets exponent to the power of three equals 2,382 rand and we're going to round to two decimal places because that just makes sense with working with money 2,382 2,382 cents comma 3 cents 2,382 rand sorry and 3 cents that's how much it would be worth in 3 years